Okay, chapter 2. Current. This is a whole chapter dedicated to what we were just talking about in chapter 1. Current. The flow of electrons. After completing this chapter, you're going to be able to state the two laws of electrostatic charges, define the term Coulomb, identify the unit used to measure current flow, define the relationship of amperes, coulombs, and time through a formula, describe how current flows in a circuit, describe how electrons travel in a conductor, define and use scientific notation, and identify commonly used prefixes for powers 10. First of all, the first law of electrostatic charges states that like charges repel each other. So if you've got a negative and a negative, they're going to repel. If you have a positive and a positive, they're going to repel. The second law of electrostatic charges states unlike charges attract each other. So if you've got a negative, it's going to be attracted to a positive. Positive is attracted to a negative. Now, Coulomb, that I already shared with you from Chapter 1, is the unit adopted for measuring charges. This is the number. This doesn't fit in your calculator very well. So what we do is we put it into this form here that we call scientific notation, or what's known as engineering notation. This actual number, we say, six. 0.24 times 10 to the 18. That means that this is 6.24 and there's 18 places past the decimal point. So 6.24 and then 16 zeros after it. You all understand that? Okay? It's very important that you get used to working with these types of numbers because in electronics we work with great extremes of numbers. And this is just one example. There's our law of electrostatic charges. This is our first law. Like charges repel. Our second law, opposites attract. Current. The book says that it's the drift of electrons from an area of negative charge to an area of positive charge. I disagree with this. I don't like this definition. I want to remove the word drift and change it to the word flow. It's the flow of electrons from an area of negative charge to an area of positive charge. Drift makes it sound like you're just kind of wandering and drifting. No. If you've got negative and you've got positive current, flows very decisively from negative to positive. Amp here, abbreviated with the capital letter A, is the amount of current in a semi in, excuse me, in a conductor when one coulomb of charge moves past the point in one second. So what Andre Marie Ampere came up with is said that every 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons that go by every second is going to be called an Ampere. So what he did is correlated, correlated quantity of electrons to time moving. And that's really the unit of value that sucks, right? The fuses in your car are measured in what? Amperes. How many coulombs per second can flow through that circuit before the fuse interrupts? The same thing in household electrical, right? Your breaker box, these break circuit breakers here, in this panel, these are all measured in what? Amperes. How many, how many electrons per second, how many coulombs per second can flow through these? The relationship between amperes and coulombs per second can be expressed as I, current, is equal to Q, which is quantity of electrical charge in coulombs, over T, time measured in seconds. So I is equal to Q over T. That's the formula. Whole, this is the movement of an electron from one atom to the next, creating the appearance 
of a positive charge moving in the opposite direction. This is a question that was asked last chapter. This is a different philosophy, a different theory on how current flows. Here they say holes are flowing from positive to negative. I'm saying electrons are flowing from negative to positive. It really doesn't matter. Because if it's 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons that flow that way, or 6.24 times 10 to the 18th holes that flow that way, it's still going to give us an equal amount of current. This is uh, how they show in this illustration how current flows from copper atom to copper atom to copper atom. Because copper has four, or excuse me, yeah, three or fewer electrons in the balance shell. So three electrons can park in that balance shell and move from negative to positive. This is like looking at a piece of wire. This also is like looking at a cross section of a conductor, a piece of wire current flowing from negative towards the positive, or here it's also showing these positives migrating from positive to negative. This would signify hole flow. This is electron flow, current flow. That's what we study here. So just remember current flows negative to positive. The other thing that I want to show you briefly with regards to current flow is that in these last illustrations, they make it look like the electrons are hopping from atom to atom. It gets it back up here a little bit. I don't want her to grab that bottle of pot. Okay. Put your hand on the end of the table, the second table here. No, you're okay there. Just these two tables. Put your hands on the end of the table. Watch that. Be careful. I'm going to kick it. How quickly did you feel what about? Uh, it? As soon as I hit it, it's pretty fast. Yeah, it's fast. That's how current flows. So current doesn't flow, you know, hot gas from rock to rock from atom to atom. It's instantly. As soon as I apply the negative here and a positive there, that energy is transferred at the speed of light. light. Very good. The speed of light. 186,000 miles per second. 186,000 miles per second. 300 million meters per second. Or 161,000 nautical miles per second. And don't laugh when I say nautical miles. It's not because I'm ex-Navy. The reason I say nautical miles is that that's the formula that we have to use if we're working on radar systems. Like NASA. Like NASA. Or even at, at the Federal Aviation Administration down at CPAC. All of their radars are calibrated for nautical miles because all of the planes fly what? In knots. For speed. So that's really a very common term. Question? Slow. But that transference of energy is fast, the speed of light. So that's, I, that's very good you bring up that point because I want you to understand. Current flows the speed of light, but that's the transference of energy. You know, so very good point. Voltage source, voltage source supplies electrons from one end of the conductor. It removes electrons from the other end of the conductor. So a voltage source must have the ability to supply and remove. You have to have both. You could think of it as a kind of pump. It's like an electric pump. A pump creates pressure. A voltage source creates pressure, electrical pressure, not water pressure like a pump. Make sense? So this here, next slide, deals with scientific notation. But I want to make a correction here. The book calls it scientific notation. In fact, this is actually engineering notation. Scientific notation could be times 10 
to the first power, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Engineering notation is always going to be in groups of three times ten to the third times ten to the sixth times ten to the ninth times ten to the twelfth fifteenth eighteenth do you understand? One of the reasons that I want you to use not scientific notation but engineering notation is that also correlates with metric values that we use in electronics. Times 10 to the third, 3,000 would be what? Three, how would we, what would 3,000 be in metric? Three kilo, kilo times 10 to the third, okay? This here, next number, point zero 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 three. we could enter in our calculator three times 10 to the negative six, this would actually be 3 micro times 10 to the negative 3 is milli times 10 to the negative 6 is micro. So make sure that you get used to using these numbers and also be, make sure that you understand how to enter these numbers in your calculator. These numbers here you could probably enter in your calculator. But 6 times, 6.24 times 10 to the 18th, you cannot fit in your calculator. You have to use engineering notation to enter it in your calculator. So if you have any problems knowing how to do that, ask myself, or if I'm not available, if I'm in a lecture, ask one of the senior students or your mentor, but make sure on your calculator, and you all need calculators at this point, scientific calculators, that you know how to enter these numbers in engineering notation. One of the best things, too, is if you've still got the manual that came with your, with your calculator, look it up in the manual so you know how to do it. If you don't have the manual for your calculator, do a Google search on it. We've done this before with students. If you search for it, you can find it and then download the manual onto the computer so that you know exactly how to enter the sequence. If learning how to use your scientific calculator with this is extremely important. The math isn't going to get it any easier. It's just going to build. You've got prior experience um, from high school electronics, and you know what I'm talking about. So if you need help, just ask. Very typically, we utilize fluid systems to show us what an electrical system will behave like. This illustration here shows us like an electrical circuit using a fluid system. The pump here, this is a hand pump. We apply energy to it, and it gets the water flowing, just like a voltage source gets the current flowing. The current here will flow through the circuit as the water will flow through the pipe. The only difference here, pipes are being used as a conductor, and they're showing here this is a load. Probably if I drew this illustration, I would show this maybe as a water wheel. So when the water flows past it, it turns the wheel, and maybe the wheel will turn a generator. Make sense? This shows us some of the common terms and definitions that we'll use. This is milliampere. Milliampere. More frequently used than the ampere, it's equal to one one thousandth of an ampere, or point zero zero one or 1 times 10 to the negative third. 1 times 10 to the negative third. Microampere, used more frequently than the ampere in electronics, is equal to 1 millionth of an ampere, or 0 0.000001 amp. Or in engineering notation, this would be 1 times 10 to the negative sixth. 1 times 10 to the negative 6. In summary, laws of electrostatic charges, opposites oppose, no, excuse me, opposites attract, like charges oppose, Coulomb, 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electron, Electric current is the flow of electrons in a specified direction. The specified direction is negative and positive. Ampere is one coulomb per second. One amp is equal to one coulomb over one second. One is equal to one over one. 
and that is the relationship between current electrical charge and time. Whole movement, whole flow, negative to positive. Negative to positive. Positive to negative. Whole flow positive to negative. Electron flow negative to positive. And we're seeing who is awake. Scientific notation, negative exponents are numbers smaller than one. So typically what we're going to see here in electronics is 10 to, 10 to the negative third, 10 to, 10 to the negative sixth, 10 to the negative ninth, 10 to the negative twelfth. Positive exponents, engineering notation, 10 to, 10 to the third, sixth, ninth, twelfth. And typically in dealing with current, you're going to be dealing either with the milliamps or microamps in electronics. In electrical, you deal with amps. The circuit breaker here, this panel is probably 200 amps. It's got circuit breakers that are 15 amps, 20 amps, to take in your home. Okay? In electronics, we deal with milli and micro, very minute bits, minute parts of an amp here. Any questions on anything in Chapter 2? Questions on Chapter 2? Okay, that is it for chapter two.